Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and time for some more mucus forming foods. And next on the list is a uh, another new section that I added to the list of mucus forming foods. We have acidic fermented or distilled drinks, syrups, uh, or acid forming stimulants. And I focus on the concept of acid forming with these because they are perhaps not necessarily mucus forming, yet they are acid forming. And the thing about mucus and pus forming foods, uh, another dynamic or another way to look at why they are so bad is because they create uh, acid. This mucus and this pus sort of chemically will change into acids in our body over a long period of time. And uh, so something like these drinks that we get, these fermented kind of drinks and this kind of stuff, are uh, uh, very acidic and ultimately not going to be alkalizing on the body, ultimately going to lead to more uh, acidosis, more issues of, uh, of, of acid in the body so we have this agave nectar and I had to do a little more research on this one because I never really had been into agave nectar and the more that research I did I saw how, how processed it was and so uh, and I did a few of my own experiments and just came to the conclusion that this stuff is acid forming this is not a natural a great natural syrup that should really be used there's other things that we can use that's much more advanced than agave nectar so it made it on my uh, processed uh, acid forming syrups list then we got alcoholic beverages of all kinds ale beer brandy champagne hard cider liqueur mead porter rum uh, sake or rice wine gin herbal wine uh, Lager, fruit wine, vodka, and whiskey, and tequila, etc. And these items are, they're toxic. And people have a word, intoxic, uh, intoxication. Uh, and... You know, that's exactly what it is. You get in intoxicated when you drink these fermented drinks. They're, they're unnatural. And there's a video that I did a while back where I compare there some guys in the hood uh, that are making what's called pruno, which is prison beer. So they take some, f some f fruit, let it rot, and... Uh, put a old dirty sweat sock for the yeast agent in and let this thing sit for a week in the jail cell and it ferments and then they drink it and they get drunk then I compared that to some Chateau Lefeuille however you, you say it like one of the most expensive wines in the world and oftentimes we don't there's a double standard when it comes to uh, drinking what the rich people drink is supposed to be more high class more sophisticated than what prisoners would drink there's some some prison beer that's made but from this level of consciousness it's all the same an alcoholic beverage is an alcoholic beverage i don't care if you put it in a pretty bottle or if you say a blessing and pray over it or, or whatever you do it is acid forming it's unnatural historically you can perhaps understand why wine was created because before refrigeration before you could s sort of cook juice you know, this pasteurization process which well, I guess we'll talk about that a little later on but what I call sort of cooked juice, uh, before we, they did that, 
the, really the only way that you could have a drink that was made from some fruit or something like that would be to ferment it. And in uh, hard apple cider was like a huge thing in America back in the uh, in the Pilgrim days, and uh, and and so alcohol has always really <laughs> been a, a big part of uh, the American dream, I guess. The you know, knock you out, uh, you gotta, as his brother Air says, you <laughs> to experience the American dream, you gotta be asleep, and. So, you know, uh, Eric doesn't talk too much about alcohol. Uh, he mentions that your desire, your taste for alcohol that will dissipate the cleaner that you get. And I, I've experienced that because I used to drink alcohol. Uh, I used to drink a lot of alcohol <laughs> when, uh, you know, sort of in that, American party type of mode and it got to the point where I went back and I after having transitioned for a while I went back and tried to drink and it was not pretty you know I just got sick uh, to my stomach and was like this was this was a mistake and that's what it should do it should make us sick because it is toxic that's why it's called in, uh, intoxic, uh, intoxica <laughs> intoxication, uh, you know. Let's keep going. Syrups, brown, rice, barley, malt, chocolate, corn, molasses, artificial flavoring. Uh, and again, you know, molasses is one of those things, you know, it's very processed. Uh, you know, just off of these kind of processed syrups corn syrup high fructose corn syrups all very highly processed and ultimately becomes uh, very acidic and concentrated in the body uh, cocoa coffee uh, that's interesting epidemic i never was really in the coffee but you know I st i've met people that sort of had this bad coffee addiction and it's almost like a religion it becomes this kind of <laughs> you know just this this real attraction to uh to coffee and again acid forming uh and and coffee enemas are never to be considered as i sometimes get that question uh kombucha tea again this fermented it's, it's kind of stuff the cleaner you get when you smell it it's going to repel you as it should uh, it's 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 unnatural. It's not. Uh, you juice some fresh apples or some fresh grapes. That shouldn't repel you. But. This you know these fermented things are just not what the body was created to ingest. Soft drinks, soda pop. Uh, you know Coca Cola with or without the cocaine. And, you know it's all acid forming. <laughs> problematic uh tea uh, just tea is probably the one of the least harmful that's on here it's still acid forming still a stimulant it can be used on the transition that's one of the things eric recommends to uh, try to maybe use tea uh, if you're you know trying to get off a of coffee or something there's have a you know kind of a coffee alternative um vinegar uh, white and apple cider vinegar, both acid forming, uh, acidic. It does some people think that apple cider vinegar is this great kind of cleansing agent or this special tonic to drink and ingest and clean yourself up and that kind of stuff? And from a mucus diet perspective, vinegar is is actually something to immediately get off of. It's not even something to really be transitioned off of. Uh, from an arid perspective, vinegar is something to be kind of be scrapped immediately. And that's another sort of nuance of the diet is understanding which things should be scrapped immediately and which things do you need to transition off of. And I did tra I, I transition off of vinegar. There were certain things that I 
sort of relapse to. But that was really the thing interesting about vinegar is whenever I went back to vinegar, it was always about relapse. It was always about falling back. And, and the, why vinegar is so dangerous is because the things that vinegar is in, the ketchups and the mustards and the mayonnaises and all these kinds of things, they tend to trigger the worst foods that we used to eat. Because I know with me, I associate all of those you know, kind of vinegar, vinegary condiments with the worst foods, with the pus forming foods, with the burgers and the fries and uh, that kind of thing. So vinegar is something to be avoided. We got old fashioned root beer. So I will end this section there and we will pick up with fermented foods and sauces in the next video. Peace, love, and breath.